Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 217. What I typically try to do is, if I get a request for a subject to do on one of my shows, I try to put that up at the top of my list of shows I'm planning on doing. So I had a request to explain in simple terms what single sideband is when listening on shortwave. So I'm going to attempt that to do that. But we try that again. I'm going to try to attempt to do that today. Okay, a couple of assumptions. One is I'm no expert. I'm far from an expert, so take everything you hear me say with a grain of salt. And if some of it doesn't sound right, number one, research it and question it. Number two, if you know it's wrong, please let me know so I can correct it. Okay, the second assumption is... There is a ton of information out there, and both the Internet and books at your local library. So this is just a little simple explanation, and you can research it deeper by checking those resources. Okay, so what is single sideband? Single sideband is a form of modulation used on typically shortwave radio. And it's used for long-distance communications. When you want to get your signal out further, you use single sideband mode. It's used by amateur radio operators for voice. It's used by amateur radio operators for data or digital transmissions, such as PSK31, which I showed you. That uses upper single sideband. It's used uh, sometimes by the United States Air Force in their aircraft that are flying around the world to get better transmissions longer distances. Used by commercial airplanes sometimes. And it's used by pirate radios, again, to get more bang for their buck on their signal. So what is single sideband modulation? It's basically a subset or a derivative of AM amplitude modulation. And it removes some of the components in an ordinary AM signal to make it more efficient. Now, AM modulation is inefficient from two points. Number one, it occupies more bandwidth on the shortwave spectrum. It's just wider. Secondly, it's inefficient in the terms of the power that it puts out. Given power in for a given power out, single sideband will give you more bangs for the, bang for the bucks, and therefore, most likely, you'll cover a longer distance. Okay, now let's let's look at the AM amplitude modulated signal. Here's a very simple diagram. And what it's showing you, this is what an AM signal would look like. Here is the uh, signal power or signal strength, and here is the frequency. So you've got the carrier and you've got a lower sideband and an upper sideband. So you get an AM modulation, you get all of this. And as you can see, it takes a lot of bandwidth. So say you could remove the carrier, remove one of these sidebands, therefore the signal bandwidth would be much smaller. Plus, it turns out that magically, <laughs> magically, not magically, it just, I don't understand you get more power out of this single sideband configuration. So, but what that means is, and you might ask yourself, okay, why doesn't uh, international broadcasters broadcast in single sideband? Well, the answer is simple. These components that you're taking out to produce a single sideband have to be there and so something has to put them back. 
So the receivers that have single sideband capability put back mainly the thing thing it puts back it puts back this carrier. You got to have that carrier to actually demodulate the signal. So it has to put it back because the broadcaster has taken it out. So therefore, international broadcasters figure we want to go for the most audience. So let's broadcast in AM, which AM radios are simpler and they're cheaper and more people will have as opposed to people who have radios that can do single side. So that's mainly the reason they do that. And what they do to the fact that they've lost this extra power capability from using single sideband, they punch, pump tons of kilowatts of power into their signal to get it out. Okay, so that's basically um, what single sideband is. And like I say, the shortwave radios that have single sideband capability that extra circuitry is putting this carrier back and then letting you select either upper or lower. So that's basically how it works. Now, let's, um, let's try, although the conditions have changed, let's try tuning a uh, single sideband on my Grundig 750, which has a circuit called a BFO, a beat frequency oscillator. That beat frequency oscillator puts this carrier back in. It's missing on the signal that we're receiving. So let's just see what happens right now. Okay. That's what you will hear if you do not have single sideband capability on your receiver. Now, since this radio does have that, then what I do Turn it back up. Is I select, is I select either the upper or lower sideband. Typically, I'm listening to um, amateur radio operators on 7.23 megahertz, and typically they use a lower sideband. They could use either, but typically for voice communications, they use the lower sideband. So here's the kind of Donald Duck. Okay, now we're going to select single sideband, and it first comes up with upper sideband. Okay, <laughs> these guys happen to be operating on upper sideband. Like I say, they can use either. I can just get them. Keep talking. Of course, now he stopped talking. Let's just see if we can find somebody else. Okay, now, the other thing you have to do on this radio is that it has a BFO control so that you can move that oscillator's frequency back and forth until you get it where it needs to be. Some radios, for instance, um, I believe this, no, not the 660, but some radios do that automatic tuning for you so you don't have a BFO control. So let's just tune it in here. See, we're off. Still sounds like Donald Duck. Okay, we're going to try lower. There he is. Now, 
yeah. What you probably noticed is, number one, as I said before, they can operate on upper sideband or single sideband, and that's selectable on this radio. Um, so I was originally, the first time you push this button on this radio, it takes you to upper. So I was trying to tune them up on upper, was not able to. So I then pushed it again, and I got lower sideband, which is where they typically are on lower sideband. And then I used the BFO knob to tune them in to get that injected carrier from the radio in sync with the sideband. And sometimes that can be a little touchy, but once you get it in, you get a very clear, strong signal. And that's the other thing about uh, using single sideband is that all the noise you normally hear on AM modulation is basically reduced greatly when you're tuned to single sideband. But of course, if the station or whatever is broadcasting on AM, you can't use single sideband. I have seen instances where people have been able to take an AM station and tune it in using single sideband and therefore reducing the noise. I've seen people do that. I've not been too successful with that doing it myself. So anyway, that's just a, um, a quick discussion of single sideband, what it is, how to tune your radio. The, like I said, the 750 has that capability. And for instance, my Texan 660 has that capability. And typically you will pay, say for a radio, just a typical radio without single sideband will be, say, $50. A equivalent radio with equivalent capabilities with single sideband will cost you about $80 to $100. So you have to pay extra for that single sideband capability. But you can listen to a lot of things on single sideband that you don't normally listen to. Um, the, um, the other beauty of it, like I said before, is it's not really that difficult to tune once you've done it a couple of times. You'll get the knack and it'll be easy. So anyway, if you have any questions or you have any corrections, please leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you have a subject you want me to discuss, please send me a comment or an email at trrs73 at gmail.com, and I will greatly appreciate that. So that's the show for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.